You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionFit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index, for in-depth and relevant information. SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com com slash VIX today to learn more. And now get ready to hit the auction block. All right, everybody. That music means it is Thursday. It is noon central. It is 1 p.m. Eastern. It is time once again for episode due of your bi-weekly options extravaganza known around the globe. As the option block. My name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever engaging, ever educational Options Insider Radio Network. I want to thank all of you. Take the time out of your busy day to A, listen, and then B, if you like what you hear, rate and review on your platform of choice. Could be anywhere, could be on Apple, could be on Google, could be on the old YouTubes. How do you like to get it on the YouTubes these days? Could be where you get our app, whatever the case. May be. We thank all of you. Take the time. It clearly does help new people continue to discover the network now 16 plus years into this crazy options journey. This whole crazy options podcasting that we kicked off way back in the primordial ooze days of early 2007, pre iPhone, had to have an RSS reader to get it. We were crazy, but it kind of worked out. <laughs> and of course, if you want even more in your lives, and hey, who doesn't in these crazy, tumultuous markets? There's only one place to go. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. You get access, of course, to nearly 200 hours of pro content. You're talking over a week, <laughs> closing in on nine days, I think now, worth of nonstop content you can binge without eating, sleeping, or going to the bathroom. Nonstop. That's how much content is there for you. As well as, of course, pro Q&A sessions every week, options oddities every week. Live access to this and everything else we do. Early access to content. Sometimes like we did a double options boot camp yesterday. You don't have to wait a week for that. You can, of course, listen live and get it immediately. Or you can get it early on the pro podcast feed. All sorts of exclusives hanging out there. And, of course, access to our great giveaways, theoptionsinsider.com. Slash pro is the place to go as we go around the horn, see who's joining us today. First, let's go out to the quiet, the tranquil hamlet known as St. Charles, where we are joined once again. By the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Manager. Uncle Mike, welcome back to Ye Old OB, sir. Always good to be back at Ye Old OB. Had a great time on the uh, the pro show a couple days ago, and uh, but always good to be back home on uh, our flagship program, the Option Block. Yes, you did your dalliance, your moonlighting, but now you're back on the old mothership. Good to have you back, sir. The pro folks enjoyed it. They, they came at you, but it was fun. It was fun over there. The old hot seat. It's always a little uncomfortable, a little squirmy. At the end of the day, it's always fun, and people can't wait to come back on. So 
Glad to have you on there. If you want to check out Uncle Mike's appearance, theoptionsider.com slash pro is the place to go. Someone else who's been in the hot seat, the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Andrew Gervinazzi from optionpit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the show. Today's seat may be a little bit more comfortable than the hot seat, sir. Well, you know, that that hot that hot seat, it is primed. You are you are primed to be poked and prodded with uh, you know, those sharp stickers that you have. So you gotta be ready. But I we gotta we have more of a crew now. I have a I have a tribe around me, so I feel better. You feel better, yes. Our, our pro folks at the end of the day, they like you. They may throw you some curveballs, but they like you at the end of the day. And someone else who's joined us in the hot seat on the pro side, and also joining us today in the SIBO hot seat, he is the flow master himself, Mr. Henry Schwartz, holding down the hat as the global head of client engagement, data, and access solution over there at SIBO. Mr. Flowmaster, welcome back to the program, sir. Thank you, Mark, and hello, everybody. I'm I'm uh, happy to be with you. Always engaging into the uh, the fun stuff that goes on in in our options market. Any progress over there at SIBO on shortening your business card to just the Flow Master? That would make my life a lot easier. And quite frankly, it's a pretty cool business card to have, don't you think? I, I like it as is. It, it sometimes I abbreviate it for different uses and take words out because there's a lot of words there. But it's Henry uh, Schwartz, I'm good with it, Flow Master, SIBO. Boom, done. I, Rolls off the what? tongue. That is, that is a good one. And 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 you know, like I get, I, I'm honored to be up there. You know, with the Viceroy and all these other, the other, uh, you know, the meatball. <laughs> you got them. You you got it nailed. We have a good pantheon of nicknames here on the network, and it is time to roll on into see what the pantheon of market gods has in store for us. It is time for the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Trading Block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading out there. And, you know, it does seem like a little bit of a tale of two markets, at least for the earlier in the session. And right now, earlier in the session, we were kind of hanging out slightly green, slightly red, kind of depending where you were looking. Now, as we're kicking off the show, it does seem like we are tilting into the red proper, if ever so slightly out there right now. Most of the major indices, actually, this is kind of strange as well. All of them pretty much off about a quarter of a percent as we're kicking off the show. We don't usually see them all moving in lockstep like that, which means the VIX, which was hanging out at an 18 handle earlier this morning, now ticking up to a 19 handle. So still down from where it was on Monday's show, but it's at a 1960 when we kicked off the show. That puts it down about eight tenths of a point. It was down well over a point just a little little while ago. VIX got down to as low as looks like about, about 1891 uh, this morning here. So uh, intriguing stuff out there on the VIX front. And then our old friend VIX hanging out still at the bottom end of that practical range of 75. That's down a point from where it was on Monday show. VXX, I'm going to throw a number at you, listeners. It's going to blow your mind. VXX 43.3. You might be saying, what the F? <laughs> it's because it was a 1080. On our last show, yeah, they finally came through and had their four for one reverse split. It went into effect on Tuesday. So if you fired up your VXX screens and your mind was blown, that's why. Now we're just waiting for the last of the Mohegans, UBXY. I don't know what the hell they're doing out there. They're still hanging out at a four and a half. They are unchanged from Monday's show. They're seeing everybody else having these reverse split parties. And UBXY is like, yeah, I don't feel inclined to do so. I like hanging out at a sub five level. <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking. I know they have to have a lot of their products. Usually they try to bundle it, I think, to have multiple reverse splits happen at once. But for whatever reason, we're not getting UBXY right now. SVIX giving up some of the ghosts today, down about a quarter. It was hanging out unched at about an 18 and a half. Now it's about an 18 and a quarter. If Vol keeps ticking up today, we're going to see SVIX, of course, keep going the other way. UVIX down at a 15 handle, 1590 when we kicked off the show. That's actually starting to tick up a little bit. It was up about a tenth of a point. When we kicked off the show. And last but not least, good old Vol Q at a 2380. That's up about eight tenths of a point from where it was at this time last show. You want more Vol Q info? Tune in to Vol Views tomorrow. We go deep into all the Vol Q fun over there. But now it's time for some trading block fun. Let's go the opposite of the way we started. Let's go out to the land of the Flowmaster. Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what is lighting up your tape on a day where it seems like we are starting to dip into the red, sir? Yeah, we did kind of start with a decent bounce, and then it, it faded off. And uh, I don't know, a couple of the pros that I talked to are leaning a little bit bearish. I'm not sure why. I mean, you know, we, we've given up a decent amount of kind of this 
nice start of the year rally. I think we're, we're probably still up, what, about 5%, 4% on the year, um, at least for, you know, for SPX. But, um, you know, a lot of like kind of little bit here and there. Um, saw some bullish flow in Rocket, Rocket Mortgage. Um, and uh, what was another interesting one? Uh, XBO Logistics was one this morning that, that I was also watching, but it just kind of seems like a mixed bag, I guess, is, you know, as, as you, as you saw, you know, most of the averages are off a little, there's pockets that are up, there's pockets that are downwards. If you look at the sectors and break it out, that's a little bit more, um, that's a little bit more varied. So, um, you know, like, you know, financials are getting whacked, materials are getting whacked today, but then you have, you know, the consumer names and, and even tech names are kind of holding up. Microsoft, I think was up around, uh, around three or four percent so it's a it's a mixed bag definitely a mixed bag let me ask you this you've been doing this for a while longer than most of us here even on the session with with the exception of course of the rock lobster who goes back to the early butter and egg days of the board of trade (laughs) but uh, that aside i'm curious do you view this as the most fed driven market you've ever been a part of sir uh yeah i i I would say so you know it's like the, the it kind of like everybody feels like we're at the end of the cycle and they're ready to be done with it. And then we're not done with it. So I don't know. I saw that the headline that said, uh, Ken Griffin told Jay Powder. What do you tell him? We're waiting. We're bated breath, sir. Ah, we lost him. Oh, you're back. (laughs) You said I I was hanging on. I know we were all hanging for what Henry was going to say. What what did Ken Ken Griffin say? Inquiring minds want to know. No, I I think the headline in the New York Post was that Griffin tells Powell to shut up. Oh, which is not very respectful, if you ask me. But when you have that much money, I guess you can say whatever you want. But, um, you know, I think everybody's kind of, you know, hoping to move on, you know, out of this macro cycle. Um, but we kind of keep getting pulled back into it. So I don't know. I, I would say, yeah, I think the market's a little bit confused on, um, you know, what the basic conditions are right now. Uh, and so, you know, you see what we what we see. You know, a couple, you know, we get we get a three or four percent move higher over a week or two, and then we kind of give a lot of it back and. Um, you know, a lot of capital kind of flowing in, flowing out and, and being redeployed. I guess Mr. Griffin has been listening to the old network. We don't tell him to shut up, but we do say maybe tone it down a bit with the Fed speech and definitely only speak through Powell's voice and not all this legion of Fed governors out there just spewing their opinions into the ether. That, of course, causes a lot of consternation and volatility as well. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, I'm guessing you can get behind Mr. Griffin's sentiment. And then uh, what else is catching your eye out there, sir? Well, actually, I heard something funny on from the uh, well, some of the money map guys. Garrett, uh, he's he's a really he's a really good analyst. And he's like all these Fed governors, they're always interviewing for their next job on Wall Street, so they have to come out and you know get their profile higher. There is some truth to that. <laughs> Interest rate pronouncement. I'm like I never thought of that. Um, you know. Uh, and I and I hear what Henry's saying there, and I'm and I'm so right now I'm looking at the small banks because I, I sent you some volume profile for Ozark for spoiler alert for uh, oddities, um, and my and my thought is why are the regional banks doing so bad? Okay, so I mean the market's definitely up on the year, and the KRE is down seven percent today. Now is it just because of SI? Um, and, but SI today is only down, you know, it's down a buck. So I can't imagine that taking, taking the KRE down 7%. So I'm like, I'm like, part of me is like, okay, well, well, you know, and I'm not like the biggest bank interest rate guy, but you know, better, higher rates usually mean there's a little more margin for regional banks. And in the beginning of the year, we kind of, you know, rallied sort of smartly. They got sort of back to their highs. And now just free fall, just, you know, a $64 number is down 13 bucks on the year. And I haven't noticed any restatement. So the only thing I can think of is, you know, our, our, our traders starting to say, hey, wait a minute. We're going from soft landing to recession and like car loans and stuff like that that some of these regionals maybe hold. And all of a sudden that gets ugly. And then I, I read somewhere that now 
Regional banks are trying to stretch duration to 90 months for car loans. I don't know if that has is that's what's causing kind of the route today, but it's like I get the big tech. Everybody loves big tech, Microsoft, and like there's those 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 behemoths, right? Because Apple's I don't think is down on the day, but like the actual like you know this is that disconnect again between. You remember like Main Street got hammered during COVID and then like big tech kind of reigned supreme. It was anyway, we'll discuss that another day. But like it's starting to feel a little bit like that again, just because of what's getting sold and what's getting bought. And that's kind of it's feeling kind of recessionary to me, as in people aren't going to pay stuff back or that's what the, the worry is. Um, anyway, so I, I'm I'm looking at that and. You know, you're seeing vol spikes. You're seeing some pretty big volume in OZK. I looked at that. Um, you know, some successful volume, rolling some puts, um, and I think that popped up on the radar last week as well for Mark. Um, anyway, it's like, you know, every time things start to feel a little bit rosy, I, and I liked Henry's sentiment. Everybody's waiting for it to be done, but it just doesn't go away. And I think, and I think we're still in that. And we have three. You know, again, three big announcements. We have a brand new shiny CPI number, right? Because it's going to be re, I think it's recast somehow to only show versus last year instead of two years. So somehow that will be nicer. Um, you know, and then you have an off our payroll number tomorrow. And then you have like every, all of a sudden now, what, 70% chance that they rise, raise 50%. When, when somebody just says we might not even be raising in the summer. So, all kinds of confusion, and I agree with Ken. How can you not agree with Ken Griffin? He's got like forty billion dollars, so I mean, he he has to be right at some time. So he's probably right a lot more times than he's wrong. There you go. And last but not least, another guy who's right more times than he's wrong. He is the uncleist of Mike, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir. What is catching your eye on at least for now? A not Uncle Mike type of day. You know, just to add to what Andrew was saying, there is this full disclosure. I don't own this stock, nor do any of my clients own this stock. Um, but um, it, it's a stock that I follow. Um, Old Second Bank. It's, it's based out of Aurora, Illinois. And um, it was actually the first bank I ever had a savings account when I was in seventh grade. It paid five and a half percent. I remember telling my dad, oh, that's all I get for putting my money in this silly bank. Uh, no, son, you need to invest in your in your future and have money in a bank. And so yeah, I, I wish my dad could find me another five and a half percent savings account these days. But uh, we're getting close, uh, to say the least. But anyway, I follow that stock. And um you know, and looking at that, it has just kind of fallen off the map over the course of these last couple of days with the performance of it. Um, it's not pleasant for uh, Old Second Bank. And so um, I kind of echo at, uh, the Rock Lobster sentiments in that, um, you know, as he was saying, talking about that, I was literally just looking at it out of curiosity. And it had a little bit of a run up uh, in uh, recently, but then now it's given all of it back. And so it, it's had a little bit of a run up since September um, and it's in the process of giving it back. And it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens to it. But I think this is the story of what oftentimes happens in tougher economic times. And we've talked about this on the show before. In tough times, McDonald's is going to last through it. McDonald's is big enough. They can uh, take the hits. They can do whatever they need to do. But Joe's hamburger stand can't. And when Joe's hamburger stand goes out of business because they can't take hard times, uh, then when something like that happens, McDonald's gets more of Joe's hamburger stand uh, business. And that could be what's going to be happening with the banks in that if people start defaulting on their car loans, on just uh, – stuff that the regional banks take that maybe the bigger banks don't want to uh, mess with, uh, then it could spell trouble for the regional banks. And ultimately, if they do go belly up or they can't compete as much, then that's just going to be more business for the bigger guys. And so if that's a sign of a recession, then uh, that is something that uh, it's showing right now. And it'll be Interesting to see. Now, don't get me wrong. I love small business. I am a small business. So, uh, but um, 
that's just an area to where it is difficult to compete with bigger business. Now, in terms of the market as a whole, uh, we do ha we have caught a little bit of a bid in the 10-year today uh, with that going higher. Uh, so it'll, it'll ultimately be interesting to see what happens with these announcements that we have coming up. Uh, but it's about inflation in the Fed. And so if the Fed raises interest rates, then uh, we hope, as me being the eternal optimist that I am, you hope that the market doesn't get beat up too badly with that. Um, but I will say this, the second that we get something that's just anything dovish, then we're going to have a rally on both stocks and bonds. I really believe that. And that's ultimately what we're looking for in a market like this. So a uh, lot happening, but what's happening, it's uh, we're all just kind of waiting around on inflation-based news and what is the Fed going to do? And not going to lie, I'm tired of saying that. Well, you lied about two other things too, Uncle Mike. I'm not to call you out on it, but first off, you are not a small business. St. Charles Wealth, a huge business out there. And then B, I don't know about McDonald's ongoing prospects. You know, they curtailed the 24-hour breakfast. And at that point, you know, I I'm done with you. I washed my hands of you. So I think they've hurt their own chances. So you lied on two things, Uncle Mike. How dare you? Uh, there you go. Well, I mean, I, you know, um, I I'm more of a Portillo man myself, so I really can't talk. They don't even have 24-hour business. And you like the burgers at Portillo. I mean, uh, the burgers, I, I guess. I like everything at Portillo's. <laughs> you lead with the burgers. <laughs> which I did mention that to my son. And so he went and tried a burger at Portillo's and he came back and said he likes them. So I guess he can back that up. I don't think he leads with the burger, but, you know, to each their own over there at the delicious Portillo's. Ticker symbol PTLO. Go pick some up today. Listen, free plug for Portillo's, not sponsoring the show. All right. How fun would that be, though? Sponsored by Portillo's. Free Italian beef for everybody out there listening. Let's keep on rolling, see what's going on out there. Let's fire up the Flow Masters Machine of Flow, AKA Good Old Trade Alert. And see what's going on out there in the market flow. Let's start off in the big indices. Let's see what VIX is up to on a day when we're starting to drift to the dark side. A 232,000 contracts. That's not a ton. It's not nothing. They're threatening a quarter of a million right now. Not bad. But that's kind of about the level of activity you would expect on a day like today. Maybe you'd hope for a little more. The ADV 643 continuing to come off of that nearly 700,000 level. But again, if you rewind the clock back to the pre Fed announcement, we were down around half a million. So it still is net up about a buck fifty or close to it from that level per day. Spy, you know, day that ends in Y, Spy is going to put up some numbers today. 5.3 million. The ADV, 8.8 .8 million. You know, it is funny. The Spy ADV always hangs out around eight something to nine million. And by this time of the show, we're already at five million just about every day. <laughs> so obviously the first part of the session is the banger part for Spy. And they hang out for the rest of the session and probably put up some numbers right at the end of the day when all the gamma bombs are going on. Uh, so it's very weird how spy flow works. Uh, S flow, similar deal, one and a half million, about 1.55 million contracts right now. The ADV about 2.65 million. I just ran the scan here on the old flow master machine and of the top 20 going up in SPX right now, all 20 as expected are expiring today. If you go beyond that though, if you go to the top 40, a little bit different today than we've seen in the past. There's about nine names that are, dare I say it, not expiring today. That's the most we've seen in quite some time. Usually it's sometimes all 40 of the top 40 are all going out today. And I even see one June sprinkled in there. So it's not all expiring in the next 24 hours either. Most of it is. You take out the June, I think everything else is expiring on today. Oh, no, there's a couple of March 17th, so regular monthlies as well. So three contracts not expiring in the next 24 hours. So depends on your frame of reference, how that looks. And then the Qs, again, a day that ends in Y, Qs are going to put up numbers. Today, 1.7 million contracts. The ADB, 2.8 million out there. So that's come off a little bit too. It was north of three not too long ago. Let's get out to the single name, see what's lighting things up out there. You guys are talking about small regional banks and just banks in general. How about SVB Financial Corp, ticker symbol SIBB. This is not on our top 10. They're doing 30 odd times their ADV out there today, but it's still only about 35,000 contracts. Not enough to break into our top 10, but it is worthy of note. This is a member of the S&P 500 that is selling off 126 handles or nearly 47% today. This is SVB Financial, ticker symbol SIBB, parent company of Silicon Valley Bank. Apparently things no bueno out there. They're doing a stock sale 
because they have a huge cash burn apparently and they are coming for this stock today. So I guess if we wait a few hours, maybe this one will break into the top 10, but for now at least not making it, but just crazy. Had to kind of point that out. The actual number 10 on our top 10 today, listeners, is a name you all know and love or potentially hate. It is Baba. By the way, it cost you 206,000 contracts to break into the top 10 today. That's not a banger day, but it's not a buck 50 either. It's somewhere somewhere a little bit better than that. But it's, of course, not closing in on 300,000, which is, of course, just a, a banger start to the day. Uh, Alibaba selling off a bit today, 83 and about two thirds, down about 3.3 points. Uh, some, shall we say, sluggish news coming out of China, and that, of course, weighing on the premier Chinese name, at least for a lot of you out there, Alibaba. Number nine, the aforementioned Softy, 223,000 contracts on the tape. Softy managing the buck to trend, at least for right now. Let's see, the day is young. They may end up red on the day. Hanging out right now, 255, up about a buck 30. They got as high as, wow, 259 and a half today. So they have given up four and a half handles already of that. So it looks like they're probably going to maybe, maybe drift red <laughs> by the end of the day here. So, wow, yeah, getting sucked down. The big sucking sound for Microsoft. But good today for 223,000 contracts. Number eight, we've got a lot of drama still out there in the land of crypto, not the least of which I should say with its number seven counterpart, spoiler here, Silvergate. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. But all that hand-wringing, sturm and drag, causing a lot of consternation in the crypto space, which of course spills over to one of the leading names in the crypto space, which is Coinbase. Number eight today, 231,000 contracts off five bucks today. $58 is where it's trading right now. It's about almost 8%. So, yeah, they're coming for Coinbase today, which also makes sense when you hear what our number seven is. As I, I just mentioned, Silvergate Capital, ticker symbol SI. This one's been coming under heat for the better part of the last week now. 266,000 contracts on the tape for them today. They're off another buck 30 or nearly 26% trading 364. You know, if you've been paying attention, listeners, they came out about close to a week ago now and said, you know, we have some concerns that maybe we may not be a going concern going forward. So they were $22.32 on the 15th of February. Now they are $3.62. You go all the way back to a year ago, they were one sixty-two and two thirds. So talk about some value destruction out here. My goodness, that makes VXX and UVXY look tame by comparison, at least over that time frame. You extend, obviously, the time horizon for both of those vol products, and they've wiped out a lot of vol and value themselves. Uh, number six, wow, all the way down to number six. A weird day today, listeners. Got the Amazonians, 400,000 contracts exactly. Amazon kind of unched on the day off about a dime, 93.82 right now. It was rallying earlier this morning, got up to about 96 and a quarter before they started to come in for it. So from that high earlier this morning, they are now starting to flirt with the red. So they have given up quite a bit, so over two bucks, about 260 or so, 240. Uh, so, yeah, selling off to the dark side here for Amazon. Number five, going to the chip zone right about on schedule now. AMD fighting its way back into the top 10 after getting kicked out for the predominance of earnings season out there. Now it's back 434,000 contracts on the day. About 85 bucks is where it's hanging out right now, off about 40 cents. Got as high as nearly 88 earlier this morning, 87, 81. So, obviously, selling off from there as well, like the rest of the market. Number th number four, this is the name we haven't talked about in a while, getting back to Mr. Rock Lobster's hand-wringing over the banks. Not quite a regional bank, a big bank, but this is Bank of America. Ticker symbol BAC, 471,000 contracts on the tape for them today. They're off nearly two bucks or nearly 6%, trading 30 and two-thirds out there right now. So a lot of, a lot of different headlines bumping Bank of America to the dark side. Then number three, we were just talking about, hey, maybe are they coming back for the crown again? The answer, at least so far today, is no. This is Apple. All the way down at number three, listeners, 514,000 contracts. Apple turning red again, but off about a third, right around 152 and a half. They tried to rally this one today multiple times. They got up to 154 and a half. Looks like three times today, <laughs> pretty close to it, before they finally gave up the ghost. I said it, you know, market hates when Apple is red. They try so hard. To make it green every day. And they tried three or four times today to rally it. And they all ran out of steam. And now it is down about 40 cents on the day. So selling off about two bucks from the high of the day. So intriguing stuff out there for Apple. Number three. And then number two. 
This name has been on the rampage of late, putting up 551,000 contracts. This is NVIDIA. Yes, even NVIDIA can sell off on a day like today, listeners. Off three and a half bucks or about one and a half percent. Trading 238 and about a third out there right now. They got as high as 244 and a half earlier today. So they tried to pop this one too until they could no longer, till they ran out of steam. You know what number one is, listeners. You don't need me to tell you, but you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. It's Tesla, one and a half million. So Tesla just really lapping all the competitors right now. You could add up NVIDIA and Apple and Bank of America, and Tesla has done more than, than the number two, three, and four combined. One and a half million contracts on the tape for Tesla out there today. So Tesla off uh, nearly five bucks, about four and a half bucks, trading 177 and about a half right now. Looks like there's an analyst downgrade. Even though Kathy Wood is buying it again, so maybe that'll spook you. <laughs> also, we have I think we have more recalls going on out there. I think an investigation into some of the some of their cars are steering wheels are popping off. Never a good thing. So it's a day that ends in Y. There's always some drama around Tesla today. It's driving it back down. Got as high as 185 this morning. Now it's trading 177 and about a half. So they're coming for Tesla, at least for today. Still, of course, 76 handles above its 52 week low. It set oh about a month and change ago. So a lot popping off out there. A lot popping off also in earnings season still this week, listeners. Still some big names on the docket. We had Sienna on Monday. Tuesday, we had good old Dick's Sporting Goods. We tweeted a highlight about Dick's Sporting Goods, listeners, on Twitter. (laughs) And we got flagged for sensitive content. (laughs) Apparently, they're still tweaking their algos. If you write anything with Dick's Sporting Goods in it, apparently that is adult content on Twitter and you will get flagged. So watch out for that one. Listeners, uh, sound hound after the bell on Tuesday as well. Campbell's Soup, Soup Vol. On Wednesday, we had Ulta for all the beauty folks out there and Oracle today after the bell. Tomorrow, we've got Target, but not that Target, the other Target out there, listeners, and a bunch of other names. You want to see what's going on? We have updated hot off the presses from our friends over there at Orat's. We've got the earnings move, earnings move results, earnings season, and earnings trades reports. Let's go out to the results reports really quickly for from this morning, uh, we had BJ's today before the bell. And this is a name we don't talk about a lot. One of the less heralded of the wholesale clubs. Maybe you love it. it. Seems like Costco and Sam's Club get all the attention in that space. They were before the bell. Seventy-four and a third is where they were trading. They were pricing in about six percent. They delivered four point seven percent for BJ's. Even though they are rallying right now, one of the few names that is up. So the market apparently liking what they had to say this morning. Uh, we also had JD.com. We talked about them before. This is another Chinese e-commerce name. Uh, they were popping off before the bell as well. They were at 47 bucks going into their announcement. They were pricing in 6%. They delivered nearly 9% to the dark side, and they're off over 10% now. So a little bit of outperformance out there on the JD.com front. In terms of things that are popping off today after the bell, we have Ulta after the bell. 524.10 is where they were trading. Man, Ulta, apparently not a fan of splits. 30 and a quarter is what they were pricing in straddle wise. In the past, they've moved 20 and a quarter. So fully $10 worth of extra juice in Ulta this cycle. That is a lot. Beauty Vol, is there that much extra Beauty Vol right now, listeners? I don't know. Maybe you should trade Ulta and find out. We've got Oracle after the bell today as well. 88 and a half. They're pricing in $4.10. In the past, they moved $5.40. So less Vol in Oracle, about a buck 30. And fully $10 worth of extra vol in Ulta. That is intriguing. Also, we have, after the bell today, we have good old Gap, ticker symbol GPS. About 12 bucks is where they were trading. They're pricing in about a buck 10. In the past, they've moved 80 cents. So a little bit, a sprinkling of extra juice out there in good old GPS. Coming up next week, we got five below. Oh, and Dollar General, Uncle Mike's favorites. Let's do five below really quickly. Even though I know that's a premium dollar store, that kind of spooks a little bit rich for his blood. Uh, five below, 15th after the bell, $201 is where they were trading. So juicy five below as well. They're pricing in $12. In the past, they've moved 14 and a quarter. So actually less vol in the five below range. Let's see if Dollar General confirms that. They're the 16th before the bell. So the very next morning, they're trading at about 218. So Similar price levels were five below in Dollar General. That's interesting. A Dollar General, they're pricing in eight dollars and thirty-four cents. In the past, they've moved nine eighty-six. So less vol across the board in five below and Dollar General. Interesting. That is interesting. And in terms of the season 
updated season report listeners are hanging out at 106%. That is down from the whopping buck 52 or so we were hanging out at after week one. I said that was going to come in. That was unsustainable, and it is. Our average, our long-term average, since we've been crunching these numbers, listeners, going back to before the pandemic, is about 92%. So that is still frothy, 106. We'll see if that hangs out there or comes in a little more. Uh, We added, I should say, we exited four trades today, two straddles in good old BBW and two calendars in ASN. And then we added two straddles, one in ERJ and one in SWBI. Check all that out for yourselves. The Options Insider.com. Click on the Options News and Articles tab to begin your journey to the dark side because it's time for us to continue our journey right on into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody, it is time to get weird. It is time to get wild. It is time to unleash the beast that is the Eye of Sauron, see what it fixes its gaze upon today. And it has already fixed its gaze upon a few things for us. But I know the Flowmaster, his gaze is always watching like Roz from Monsters, Inc. as well. So, Mr. Flowmaster, I know a lot's coming across your tape Hit us with the first one, sir. Sounds like you're getting a little bit uh, beverage happy out there in Molson Coors, sir. Uh, Yeah, this was an interesting one. I did trade it, and I'm not going to say that I made any money at it, but um, there was some funky call buying on Tuesday. Uh, In fact, 10,000 of the April 57 calls, there was like about 1,500 swept in the market and then about 8,500 crossed, right? So that's how we... It's how we tend to see these kind of institutional uh, committed orders, meaning customer hedge fund usually when it's a trade that big says, hey, I want to buy 10,000 of these. They talk to a trading desk. Trading desk says, uh, I'll give you a guaranteed price and I'll see if I can do better. And so then it's up to the discretion of the of the trader to kind of get what he can, he or she can. In this case, um, they were able to sweep about 1,500 in the 32 cent range. And then about uh, not even a minute later, they they crossed the full 8,500 at 36 cents. So the customer's average price is around 35 cents. That's when the stock was 52.79 on Tuesday. Uh, on Wednesday, the stock was up about two dollars, and they were able to get out of about a third of that trade uh, for a buck 13. So they kind of tripled their money there. Uh, but then what's interesting is the flow was a little bit more mixed up yesterday and. Um, not only did they sell out some of those calls, I thought they were legging into another strike, you know, so basically taking some money off the table and, and reloading. Um, but there also was some decent put volume. And now the stock's kind of come right back down to not quite as low as when they first got in. But um, it almost looks like they kind of are playing the the kind of the daily volatility um, rather than kind of making, you know, an aggressive uh, upside bet on that so that that was a funky one on on tuesday and wednesday um very funky and then then another one um was yesterday's kind of we have a a funny little uh query that basically pulls out the most profitable trade in the entire market so yesterday in xp uh which is a i believe it's a brazilian um technology company you got to share this query with us so we can all access what is this most profitable. No, query. it's not. We haven't put it into the platform. Ah, but you're teasing us. But 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 I know. Yeah, like he, all he does is tease us. I know. He's like, there's this one button you can hit to find the best trade of the day, but we won't share that with you. Yeah, <laughs> like, he's unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> the, the, listen, you guys are like my uh, my focus group. So if I can tell that you like it, then. Uh, then we can go ahead and, and, and roll it in. See, then he throws sugar on yes. us, Longo. He so throws yes. sugar on us. Out. So yes, we would like that, please. 200 bucks. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, so these were, these were 70 cent calls bought yesterday um, that uh, closed around a dollar. So, uh, and it was a big trade, a $700,000 trade. So um, that one was, that one kind of stuck out as uh 
really one of the best of the day. So, um, you know, like I said before, it's been kind of a mixed bag. Um, and I agree that, you know, the, the, you know, some of these, you know, financials that are, uh, some of the ones that are really weak and then, you know, kind of the, the crypto universe of its own is very hot and cold. So, um, you know, and, and lately it's been pretty cold. So, you know, that's why you see Coinbase getting hit and silver gate and all these things. Um, so, you know, I think that that shakes people up and um, kind of causes them to go looking for, uh, I guess, what what they would consider to be lower risk trades. Am I correct in saying, Mr. Flowmaster, everyone's all up in arms. Everyone's all a Twitter, all a buzz about all things AI. We've seen Google stock rally. We've seen Microsoft stock rally, even NVIDIA rally in part due to all their forays into the realm of all things AI. Are the rumors true, sir? Are you guys playing around? Are you guys experimenting with chat GPT over there in the land of the alert as well, sir? Uh, we're experimenting for sure. And, um, and um, you, you know, like you, you, I think most people know, like we, we like to take this big mess of data and try to figure out different ways to put it to work, ways to combine it, but also ways to turn it into these nice, um, auto-generated stories, right? The narratives that, that but, but they're data-driven. So they're, they're very good quality. That's what we, I spent a lot of time on and playing around with, with, with chat GPT, um, to rephrase this story, make this story simpler, uh, add content regarding the 52 week range. It, it, it does that stuff really, really well. And what's, what's funny is, you get a, you get some really interesting debates, right? Because the you know a lot of developers look at it and they're like this thing's you know pretty dangerous. It's going to serve up some stupid answers, you know, some of the time, and you can't just start to blindly trust it. And I I agree. I, to me, it's kind of like it, it's very very capable. It doesn't have any expertise though, so uh, you really do need kind of somebody uh, an expert to be kind of working it. I, I even saw. Uh, an ad for a certificate in becoming a chat GPT. Uh, I think they referred to it as kind of a script strategist or something, which is basically how do you ask the right questions? And um, it's, it's really hot. We were playing around with it and trying to figure out ways that it can, uh, you know, kind of make our content better. Uh, I use it. I, I honestly use it daily uh, when I'm, you know, working on, uh, some interesting queries. And I'll tell you, it's really, really useful when you have a query that's not working right. You can basically say, hey, what's wrong with this query? And um, most of the time, it gives you the correction. Now, I'm looking here and it sounds like it identified. This isn't today's paper, though. This is the uh, 10,000 lot of the May 14 calls for 70 cents over there in XP listeners. You guys know XP, ticker symbol XP, of course. This is a Brazilian investment management company trading 1263 right now, off about a quarter today. On the year, a bit of a different story. It was trading about 34 bucks a year ago and has since they have come for it pretty hard. And it sounds like Henry, good old, uh, good old trade alert with the assistance of chat GPD. G- easy me to say chat GPT picking up uh, the May 14 calls going up this week 10,000 times for 70 cents. Is that correct, sir? That, yeah, but it was yesterday into the close yesterday. So, um, the, you know, so I actually noticed this one. The script goes and looks for significant open interest increases um, be, on the back of a single trade or a, or a, a single big sweep. So, um, and then we just market the market market to the close and figure out um, what the performance was. But um, I, 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 we actually are playing around with commands. You know, in a way, you could kind of use a system to run PNL on every single trade in the market. So 6 million trades a day. And, um, and you know, that kind of adds a whole dimension to looking at a trade because I, I know when you guys talk about trades, you're like, Hey, let's look at this trade and see how it did. Um, you can systematically, uh, track a trade like that. You can systematically track every single trade. And there's all sorts of ways you can put that to work and interesting tools and complex orders and everything else. I think that makes sense. Your use case here, because it's not rampant AI. You're finding, the activity already with your existing tools. And then you're giving parameters to chat GPT saying, Hey, find a 52 week range of this stock, find uh, these certain parameters that it can go do itself pretty easily. And then add that color to the trades. I think that combo makes sense to me. I mean, that's something, why shouldn't you automate that? This use case, I think I can get behind our eye of Sauron may get a little savvier in the days to come. Speaking of savvier, perhaps not so much, Mr. Rock Lobster. Stop me if you've heard this one before. 
but someone this morning was buying puts in a REIT. I know you're shocked. You're aghast. This horrifies you, sir. I'm. Uh, let me let me guess. It's a it's some sort of financial mumbo jumbo REIT. Um, uh, a A R C C. How could you possibly know? <laughs> Are you clutching your pearls in horror right now, sir? As, as I, I, know, I relay I, this I'm to you, because I know Henry spent some time. I think he. Were you on a, a bond desk or you on a vol desk? But what the heck do these companies do? They like buy mortgage backed securities with leverage, and they just what? They just repo the crap out of the Fed. They buy bonds, and then they just leverage that. And like, I've never quite understood it, but there's several of them. And every time the market starts to go a little nutty like this. Mark, uh, like all of a sudden, all the put buyers come out of the woodworks on these things. So I'm, and I, and I'm trying to remember if, and there was a bit of a payout last year, and 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 if, you know, if if it's the same, if it's the same traders, it was a pretty good sign that the market was going lower last year. Remember when we had that kind of that rally in the summer, and then everything went to heck, and they came in buying these things again. So. And that's why I'm, I'm looking at the regional banks. I'm like, something's – tech might not be going down, but other Main Street stuff is getting shocked. And um, if some of these funky financials – like, it, it's – all I can say is it's got my – it has the hackles on my neck standing up a little bit. So um, – but, yes, I, I see this paper, and it appears that they were buying these puts, but the Flowmaster always has more info, so I'm – I'm waiting with bated breath into what he thinks about these. <laughs> well, we'll get to the flow master in two seconds. Let me break down the paper for the folks here. Listeners, of course, you know the deal. You know the dance. We've been talking about Aries Capital for the better part of the last year. Ticker symbol ARCC trading 1875 right now off about half a buck or two and a half percent today on the year. A little bit of a different story. They were trading almost 21 bucks a year ago. They got up to their high of about 2265. That was in April of last year. And ever since then, as the Rock Lobster alluded to, it's kind of been a tumultuous rest of the year. They sell off down to about 17 bucks, and they rally up to about 20 bucks again in August, then back down to about almost a little bit shy of 17 bucks in September, then back up to almost 20 bucks in November. They've been doing this dance for a while, and we've been talking about people loading up on puts, it seems like quarterly at least, in this name. The last time we talked about this name was back on December 29th. We saw someone coming in and loading up on 10,000. Of the March 17 puts, they paid 48 cents for these. The stock was 1886, so about a dime removed from where it is right now. And go figure, the stock hasn't moved, so these puts haven't done much. These puts are still open right now, uh, so they are still open for size on the 17 strike in March. And apparently, it's probably the same people. Someone's been doing this trade like clockwork. They're coming back in to do their quarterly addition to their puts they're not even bothering to roll. They're not taking off the march. They're leaving those to go out next week. And they came in this morning and scooped up 10,000 more this time of the June. Uh, they're tightening it up a bit this time. They're going up to the 18 strike, and they paid 65 cents for these. That's a 21 vol. The stock was actually 19 bucks, and they put these up, so it was a little higher. Uh, but still intriguing stuff. So, Mr. Mr. Flowmaster, have you noticed this ongoing put palooza here in a lot of REITs, including ARCC. And what do you and or your chat GPT friend have to say about it, sir? The, um, I don't even have to ask chat GPT on this one. You know what's funny is um, we do have functionality. You, I think you've seen this in Trade Alert, which uses the 13F filing to identify the – just to really basically take the option holdings. And um, – you can see uh, a hedge fund out of California or out of Colorado, who I, I have not heard of, but they reported 85,000 puts in ARCC as of December 31st. And if you're saying this is kind of a, a, an obvious reloader and, and they tend to, you know, in this case, he's basically keeping the 10 he's got and buying another 10, um, it makes it kind of clear that's, uh, that's who it is. And so, so then when I see that, I'm like, well, let me see what other things they have put in. They seem to have, um, um, puts in no stock in um, Rivian. That's the the, uh, the other electric car company, right? Uh, Deutsche Bank. Uh, you know they've had some problems. Um, also Tesla and Plug Power. So I, I don't know what their what their strategy is, but um, basically they just show long, large, long put positions in a in a bunch of these um, names that you could probably argue have a, have a pretty big speculative component. 
Interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. For sure. That's why we bring the flow master on. I need to play around with that 13F function a little more. You're right. That is that is pretty cool stuff. And it did have the whiff of very similar paper about it. It seemed like one fund was going back to the well. They have burned a lot of money on these puts here in uh, in ARCC. And apparently they are continuing to do so, listeners, as we continue with the show right on into the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, everybody, welcome to the mail block. Let's get into our question of the week. It's got about a day left, listeners. So if you're listening live, get in there, vote at options if you haven't already. If you're listening after the fact on the podcast, clock is ticking. You got a little bit less than a day at this point. So listen into this. Go at options. Make your voice heard now. It's a pretty contentious issue right now. We're asking you, again, all things zero DTE. It's all the rage, listeners, saying there's been a lot of questions about zero DTE options lately. One of the most common is, will we see zero-day contracts listed in single names like Apple and Tesla this year. So we thought we'd put it out to you. Quite simply, will we? Yes or no? Uncle Mike, we shall begin our journey this week with you, sir. What are you voting for? Are we going to see our single name Apple and Tesla zero DTE this year? Yes or no? And then B, which way do you think our audience is leaning? I'll say no, just because it sounds like from people that are smarter than me, we just don't have the technology for that as of yet. Uh, But I will say that at some point in the future, that will happen uh, if there is demand for it. Uh, exchanges will find a way to make that work. <clears throat> and I think the audience is, uh, I'll say they're agreeing with me. Interesting. Interesting. Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster, same question for you. Do you think we'll have single name listed zero days by the end of the year? And then B, what do you think our audience is voting for? Dang. Um, I don't think it will be this year. Um, because I think they need to create a single, they need to create uh, some kind of single ticker index for the name, which I don't think should be too hard, personally. Um, but because they want to, they're going to want a cash settled product. Um, that might, that's again, this is all speculation by me. I don't think it will happen this year, but you're going to knock me over with a feather if it doesn't happen in 2024. So I'm going to say the listeners are going to say no even though they might want it. Well, you know what? I'm going to switch. I'm going to say, I don't think it's going to be this year because of technology. I agree with Mike. I don't think they can get their act together fast enough. But I think the listeners will think yes. You know, it's a good question of the week when it makes the Rock Lobster say, dang. (laughs) That's a good one. We've hit on something good. I have saved you for last, Mr. Flowmaster, because as our resident SIBO rep, you know the answer to this question. So I guess it's a long way around to me asking you, when is SIBO listing single name Apple, sir? You can break it for us here on the show. (laughs) (laughs) Zero DT on the the single stock? Um, You know, I I mean, you've seen, actually, I sent you a top secret link, Mark. Again, it's another thing that's not yet public, but uh, we do track the zero day market share very closely, and it it is by far the hottest topic I've, I've uh, heard people talking about it in, in, in a year. Um, the, the cash settled index products have, have, are much easier to deal with. Right. And I think that, um, that, that hairiness in terms of physically settling the product is going to keep single name zero day, uh, at bay while people really try to figure out how comfortable they are with it. Um, uh, you know, people are, are, you know, starting to, to look at the contract for difference trading in Europe, which is kind of like a cash settled stock option um, where, you know, the settlement can be the problem, right? I mean, you guys know you buy a call in, you know, an SCX or XSP and the, mar- and the market goes up and it expires and you get your money. And, and that's that. If you buy a call in spy and, and the market runs up and you, you all of a sudden you've made several points, but if you don't have the cash to actually take delivery, your broker will liquidate you, and that can be a sloppy process and it differs a lot between brokers. And so um, you can get some pretty ugly um, behavior in, in these in these physically settled. So I know that I know people are, are some people are pushing it for, for it in the very liquid product. Um, I just I don't I, I think there's I think there's already a lot of scrutiny on how these products. Um, work and and might be kind of impacting the market and that's why we're watching it closely in um, SPX and SPY and XSP and the futures options and um, kind of 
even going back in time and looking at the zero day behavior on Friday options, right? There's not really any different. Um, and trying to figure out, um, you know, the, I'm working on a, a nice post for LinkedIn to basically kind of track this stuff um, because there's some things about it that are new and there's some things about it that are, are not new at all. So um, so my, my vote is, is I doubt it. I really doubt it. Well, there you go. The SIBO has spoken. No listings out here this week. I'm going to get Henry in trouble. I'm kidding. Right now, listeners, as the music starts playing, we're already coming up against it. Uh, we have our audience very evenly split on this, which kind of surprises me. 51.1% saying yes, 48.9% uh, saying no. I have to admit, I'm very much in the no camp just from you know talking to people at the various exchanges, talking to the folks at OCC. Doesn't sound like there's really the plumbing in place to do this. But hey, there clearly is interest. So if they are going to be motivated to do something this year, it would be this. I, I definitely would agree with the Rock Lops. If I extended this poll to 2024 and a 20, then I would say almost 100% yes, we have them sometime by the end of next year. Just I don't think this year. I feel bad for Menz. He sent this question in for the Flowmaster a week ago. We yet, once again don't have time for it. We'll get to it next week, Mr. Menz. I, I promise. But that music means, listeners, we are coming up against it here for the show today. So we're going to do a combo of around the block as well as what the heck are you cooking up that may interest our listeners. Mr. Flowmaster, we'll start with you. What are you keeping an eye on out in the markets until your next appearance next Thursday? And then B, if folks want to check out all this cool stuff you're cooking up over there in the land of the Flowmaster that I don't even know about, where should they go to check it out? Where do we go to get that cool link? Uh for the next week, you know, I'm basically just going to be kind of watching. You know, it's almost like business as usual to me. You know, we're seeing some interesting days. We're seeing some quiet days. We're seeing some interesting kind of late day run ups, which uh, um, I'm paying some attention to and trying to understand if, um, you know, if there's some some interesting patterns there or something we could turn into alerts or analytics. And then um, on the on the technology side and the platform side, you know, we have Trade Alert, Live Vol, FT Options, which is an institutional grade uh, trading system, um, and Silex and Hanwick. And we're combining pieces here and there to come up with some very very cool stuff. And then last week I mentioned the Trade Alert API. Um, I'm going to mention it again because going back to Chat GPT, the, I'm recording a video of using Chat GPT with a sample of the way that this API works to create code to run, meaning you can basically write some Python without knowing how to code Python because ChatGPT takes care of that part and then source the data and basically say, okay, I want to sort this by the the 10 minute trailing delta and actually get some analytics out of the API that you can't even get in Trailer. And that's kind of the, the beauty of the whole of the whole API. There you go. Check them out over there at SIBO.com. And just for the record, the Rock Lobster and I are definitely interested in that most profitable trade link, sir. So definitely add okay. that to the rotation. I want to play around with that one myself over there. Meanwhile, listeners, you can play around with all this stuff and a whole heck of a lot more. You know where to go. SIBO.com is the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires. And Mr. Rock Lobster, while you're not playing with all the cool links from the Flowmaster, where should folks go if they want to play around with your content, sir? Uh, yeah, optionpit.com, 888-TRADE-01, ask for Ted. You can also look for me now on Money Map Press. Apparently, they shanghaied me over there. Um, so I will be running um, a, a product over there as well. So if you want to learn how to use SPY and VIX together uh, in a way that uh, is a natural portfolio hedge or performs when the market goes down, check it out. Uh, so that's Money Map Press or OptionPit.com. And remember, at Option Pit, when you talk to Ted or Andrew, say, hey, I listen to the show. You get 10% off. And where can you get something for nothing? That's all I can tell you. It's the best deal going. Best deal going. And last but certainly not least, if they want to check out the universe that is Uncle Mike's content, where should they go? What should they do, sir? And also, what are you keeping an eye on until Monday show? Well, in terms of what I'm keeping an eye on, um, just the, the macro announcements, just like everyone else is. Uh, if you're looking for uh, the, the universe of Uncle Mike content, follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusaw, T-O-S-A-W. If you are looking for a financial advisor, I have a lot of them that listen to this show uh, or have a lot of clients that listen to this show. Uh, check out my website, stcharleswealth.com and reach out to me. I will reach out back or I will reach back to you. 
Reach out to him over there. StCharlesWealth.com is the place to go. Give him a follow on the old Twitter as well, at Mike Tussaw, T-O-S-A-W. All one word. He's always tweeting out fun content throughout the week as well. It's going to do it for the old OB today. It's not going to do it for our broadcast day. No siree. We'll be back in a little bit with this week in Futures Options to break down all the madness going on in the Futures Options markets. Our guest will be Carly Garner. Nat Gas is moving. If I know a thing or two about her, she likes to sling some upside and some risk reversals and ladders and Nat Gas. I got a feeling she's going to have a lot to say about that and everything else going on in the world of Futures Options. Pro folks, stay tuned. That will be in your ears Post haste for the rest of you on demand folks. That'll be hitting the network a little bit later. Stay tuned for that. And then, of course, back again tomorrow, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern for volatility views. And then after that, for all you pro folks, for options oddities. Then back again next week, another episode of the Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index. For in-depth and relevant information, SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com com slash vix today to learn more you're listening to the options insider radio network the home of the options podcast for more quality options programs visit the options or search for options insider radio network in your podcast provider of choice listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the itunes and google play stores Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.